Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of the Positive Inspirational News Network. My name is Jared James Pedersen and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch uh, this entire episode of Positive Inspirational News. Uh, so we have some really cool exciting stories to share with you. Uh, and before I do, I just want to acknowledge and uh, say something to every single person that uh, took the opportunity to watch the previous episode. Uh, and liked it, posted a comment uh, on it, shared it, uh, all of that stuff. I have a special message specifically for each and every one of you. you ready for it? <laughs> Absolutely. So I love you. Thank you very much for not only seeing the possibilities for what this show can do, but also sharing your information, sharing your input, sharing your uh, comments as far as you know how you enjoyed it, uh, what you liked about it, all of that kind of stuff. So I definitely appreciate you. I love you for uh, being part of this journey with me. So I want to make sure that you remember this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, probably right about there. Perfect. That way you can remember <laughs> as we go through today's show. So, the first thing that I would like to share with you is uh, actually something that happened to me uh, just earlier today. Uh, something very exciting. So basically, what happened is I saw, because uh, we have a pool in our backyard, and a lot of times little bugs and, and you know, different things can get in there, and obviously they drown because they, you know, they fall in the water, or they fly into the water, and they can't get out. So sometimes this happens, and usually when I'm walking around the pool in the morning, you know, on a sunny day like it is today, um, I'll, you know, also if I see a bee or a fly or a moth or something like that that's in the pool, uh, you know, that's still alive and, and flapping, then I usually get the net and you know scoop it out and, and, and take it out. So today, as I was walking around the pool, I saw a bee that was you know flapping in circles in the water, you know, trying to get some traction. Um, so I, you know, instantly got the net and scooped them out and, um, and you know, put them in the net and put them on the, on the plants where, where it sits. And so he was there sort of flapping around. So I'm like, okay, he'll dry himself off. He'll be all right. So then I walk around the pool a couple minutes and I look at the net and he's not moving. <laughs> so my guess was, okay, it was, you know, overdose on the chlorine that's in the pool or he just, you know, drank too much of the water and just didn't make, whatever it was. I'm like, oh, okay, well, he didn't make it. So... Uh, what I decided to do was, you know, take the net and just sort of put him onto the ground uh, because I've seen previously when there's little dead bugs or bees or flies or whatever that, you know, ants will come out and start having at the, uh, at the, the animal that's, that's already dead. So I just put it on the ground and uh, started walking around the pool again, you know, just minding my own business. And then I had the ping, I had the thought to say, Wait a second. Uh, I, you know, what if? Because this is interesting. Because a couple years ago, I actually uh, resurrected a moth, and there was a moth in the pool. Very same, similar situation. I scooped it out, put it on the ground. It wasn't moving. I, you know, blew it on a couple times to see if it would move, but it wasn't moving. Uh, so I, I'm like, okay, well. And then I had the the inspired thought of, okay, well, let's see if I can, you know, bring it back to life, you know, because. I had previously been reading uh, Conversation with God and have been really understanding uh, this reality that we live in. And I realize everything is energy, so, um, you know, obviously this, this animal has the opportunity to revive itself. So let me see if I can give some energy to it. So this was a few years ago with the moth. And so I basically put my hands over the moth and for a few minutes I was just, you know, praying and, and giving appreciation and just knowing that uh, this moth has the ability to come back to life and fly. So I was sitting there in that energy for a couple of minutes and then I felt like it was complete so I started you know walking around the pool again and uh, within a couple minutes <clears throat> the moth was not on the ground that was flying. I saw it flying around and then it flew around me and then it you know went off on its on its merry way. So that was a really cool uh, exciting experience for me. I've never I had never previously done anything like that. Uh, before, but so today with the bee, I was remind, reminded of that same situation. I saw the bee was just sitting there on the ground; it wasn't moving, and you know I sort of dropped it onto the ground from you know a couple inches off the ground, but it didn't move. It just sat there. It was it was dead. It was frozen. So <clears throat> I decided to do something very similar. I said, you know what? Everything is energy. Everything can be shifted. 
and this bee has the ability to, you know, revive itself. So what I did is, you know, I figured it was, it was probably cold because it was in a shaded area and it wasn't very warm even though it was sunny. Um, so I decided to rub my hands together and, you know, put it, hover it over the bee so that it could, you know, receive some, some warm, uh, positive energy. And so within a couple minutes, uh, you know, I felt complete. I felt like it was good, uh, but nothing had, had changed with the bee. It was still there, still, you know, sitting there m m motionless. So what I did is I, you know, continued to walk and, and then I had the thought of uh, what if I put the bee in the sun because I had a feeling that the sun would be able to provide warmth and uh, possible, you know, rejuvenation to the bee. So I grabbed a couple of leaves and, and just scooped it over and put it into the sun <clears throat> and then, you know, continued walking. Within two minutes, I looked back at the bee and one of its, like, legs is starting to, you know, move like that. I'm like, oh, okay, it's happening. <laughs> so instantly, you know, the belief and the confirmation that this stuff uh, can work was happening. So I said, okay, great. He's gonna, you know, he's just waking up now. He's just gonna shake, shake some things off, and <clears throat> and then he'll be on his way. So then I was walking around, and then I stop and look at him, and and he's still moving, still, you know, working his way up and alive. And I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty exciting. So then, uh, you know, a couple minutes go by, and then I'm walking around, and I, I look back at him, <clears throat> and he's sort of walking around, you know, getting getting used to things, and like shaking his leg off, and you know, moving his different legs, and and then so I'm looking there, and then he stops, and he's just sitting there, and then I, I move my hand a couple times, and I guess that like sort of shocked him or frightened him or whatever, because then he instantly took off and started flying and 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 was off. But uh, so I mean that's 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 pretty good news, and I don't think you're going to hear that on any other news channel, station, show, anything, that animals can be resurrected and are actually being resurrected. <laughs> so this is a beautiful experience and I just had to share that with you. Um, I was inspired to actually film this very shortly after that happened uh, just because I wanted to share that with you uh, in, in sort of the energy that I was in as far as uh, actually making that happen. So just realize that everything is energy, everything can be shifted, and with the right belief, with the right uh, level of consciousness, you can bring animals. I believe you know the same thing can happen with people because I believe everything is is energy. We're all made up of the same stuff. So uh, this is just really something for you to consider as far as expanding your uh, level of possibilities. I know it certainly has for me. Um, you know, being able to bring a moth back to life, bring a bee back to life with the assistance of, you know, the energy, but it was my thought and my intention uh, that allowed it to happen because if I had just left the bee in the net uh, or even in the pool, it would have died. If I left it in the net, motionless, obviously, uh, without my energy and, and attention on it, it, it would have it just stayed dead. So I believe that I played a very vital role in that, in assistance with the, you know, with nature and, and the greater whole. Uh, but I believe you have the ability to do the exact same thing. Um, so whether or not you're going to be, you know, resurrecting, you know, dead animals is beside the beside the point. The point is, uh, what can you do today to believe in yourself just a little bit more? What can you do today to believe in these universal laws just a little bit more? That's something very, very exciting that I've been able to consider uh, over these past few days. Is how can I continue to expand my level of belief in myself? How can I continue to believe in myself just a little bit more today? So definitely something for you to consider. So the next story that I want to share with you uh, is something actually I've seen uh, a few times before. And it's just really, really powerful uh, creation. So basically there's this guy in Japan who developed this machine that could turn plastic bottles and other types of plastic garbage, you know, plastic bags, uh, different types of, you know, uh, like milk cartons, all these different types of plastic containers and plastic material. You can put them, stuff them into this machine that this guy created, and it basically recreates oil. <laughs> So, you know, it bas it, this, is, this is just, is, it's revolutionary, right? I mean, imagine, like, I saw there's a video on this, and I'll post the link so that you can, you know, learn more about this story and actually watch the video of this because it's, it's really amazing. But they had these, you know, like different school projects or different community projects with one of these machines where they're going out and they're cleaning up plastic and, you know, they're taking all these plastic bags and these plastic bottles. And so they're taking all this stuff, stuff that's uh, 
high, high, huge levels of stuff in landfills. So imagine being able to take these, all this plastic that you know we don't want or that's in the ocean, let's pull it out, and we can put it into these machines and actually turn it into oil so that we can now produce our own. Uh, and obviously it's more than just you know oil that we use that can be made into gasoline. There's different types of oil. There's you know you can make cooking oil and there's just different types of oil that you can create based on the type of plastic that you put into this machine. So imagine, uh, because I was actually doing a little bit more research on this and I found out that uh, some of these machines are <clears throat> excuse me like a few hundred thousand dollars, uh, you know which might be a challenge for certain individuals to be able to uh, you know purchase and finance. However, imagine if there was a city, or imagine if there was a community of people that was able to invest in one of these machines for their city or for their county, whatever. And imagine they have one of these machines, and now the community can now work together and find different plastic bottles, and instead of going to you know the recycling place to get you know five cents or whatever uh, for uh, you know different plastic bottles. Now, imagine taking all of that and putting it into these machines and basically having this community or this city creating their own oil so that now they are much more self-sufficient. Uh, they need not depend on anyone outside of themselves for this very particular um, commodity. And so, as you can imagine, having machines like that around the country uh, and especially specifically in your community, in my community, uh, this is going to be a huge, huge game changer for the way things happen, uh, because we know, you know, there's obviously uh, something holding up the alternative energy for, you know, uh, you know, solar cars and other alternative powered vehicles. So in the meantime, what we can do is just simply create our own oil based on the waste that we have already created. So nothing new needs to be brought about. This machine is. Uh, is pretty miraculous, and so when you watch that video, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be able to see some things as far as you know what the possibilities for this are. So imagine what you can do in your community, in your town, um, by showing this video and showing uh, uh, talking about this machine to other people about you know in your city how this can happen. How can we bring that into cities across the state, across the country? How can we do that? That's the kind of question you might want to ask yourself. Not, well, how much does it cost? Oh, I can't afford that. No, you can, you can get past that one, and we can say, how can we? How can we implement this to positively transform our community? How can we utilize this information? How can we utilize this technology? How can we utilize uh, this moment to positively impact other people? If you write that question down and ask yourself that throughout the day, you're going to start seeing and becoming aware of new thoughts, taking new actions that you feel inspired to do. And you're going to see some positive shifts because of it. So I would encourage you <clears throat> to write that question down, to watch this video over and over again, because as I mentioned last week, it's important to get this positive information into our subconscious and our conscious mind, brain. And so many times, we're bombarded with you know negative energy or other people's negative stories or why things won't work and this positive inspirational news show is the one of the solutions to that you get to watch this show as often as you want to sort of tap into this positive energy that's being created here with these positive news stories and uplifting and inspirational news stories and you get to see that and become part of that so that it begins to shift the way you think the way you feel it rises, raises your vibration so that you feel better. And when you feel better, you begin thinking better. You begin speaking better to other people. And they begin to feel your positive energy. And you begin to have a positive influence in, with those around you, no matter where you go. And this is something that I'm experiencing more and more uh, in my own life. So I know that being the change, you individually, me individually, being the change, be feeling what it is that we want to feel, creating what it is that we want to create. That is the way that we change the world. And this is a perfect example of this. It's me with a message and a camera. This is a very powerful combination these days. Uh, and in a second I'm going to give a shout out to a couple other really powerful people that are doing something similar with a positive message, an empowering message, uh, an individual, and a camera. And so there are no excuses for why we can't create the most fulfilling and joyful and positive and uplifting 
um, ex life experience, whether it's for just ourselves, our family, our community, or our state, country, and world. But it all begins with you as an individual taking responsibility for your life, understanding that you have the control, you have the power to create your thoughts, to create your emotions. If you remember last week, I talked about the 12 things that happy people do differently. One of them was that they manufacture their own optimism. So if you take that into this context, no matter what's going on around you, uh, you know, we could have the you know hugest collapse of this or you know now they're putting this in our food and now they're spraying that and all these different things but you have the power to say oh well that doesn't have to negatively affect me that might affect them but it's not going to affect me I know that I have the power to create the life that I desire <laughs> that's only going to benefit me oh chemtrails oh Monsanto oh that's fine that's not going to negatively affect me it doesn't have to you know when you go out in the rain just bring an umbrella. You don't have to be negatively affected by the things that are happening outside of you. And it reminds me of, uh, I went to a movie screening here uh, in my city in Hercules, California, and I got to see the, the film, the documentary, uh, The Inside Job, where you got to learn a little bit more about uh, what caused the financial collapse as far as the Wall Street situation and, and all of that. Um, so we got to watch that as a group and you know I found it, the the movie itself to be pretty interesting there was some interesting information there and I learned obviously learned some things that I didn't know before which is why uh, one of the reasons why I went is so I could watch this documentary that I hadn't seen before but one of the things I noticed was from the people that were there watching after they saw this movie and, and even during during the movie they just felt incredibly disempowered they felt horrible they said, you know, a couple people mentioned even jokingly, okay, well, now I'm going to go home and kill myself. You know, but, you know, it, it just goes to show you that when people don't realize the power that they have as individuals to create their life and to create their life experience, how they're going to respond to things that are happening around them, when people don't realize that power that they have, then they begin to become at effect. There are affected by things that are happening around them. Oh, Wall Street, you know, and this whole situation, the financial collapse. Oh my God, life is over. We're screwed. We can't do anything. Why should I even get out of bed in the morning? And if you see that, then notice something outside of them happened. So for example, two days, two days earlier, you could have had the happiest person on the planet. They could have been, you know, successful, making really good money, and, you know, everything's going well for them then what could happen is that they, they can see a movie like that or they can read a news story or, or whatever they can be around someone that, that's talking about this in a really uh, you know a negative or disempowering way and someone could hear that and even though this you know if it's the Wall Street fit situation like even though that happened and obviously it still happens but a big part of it happened a couple years ago if they hear it today and they don't realize the power that they have then they're allowing this outside situation that started or happened a few years ago can now negatively affect them, bring them down, and now their life can shift from a positive, happy, upbeat to down, depressed, feeling hopeless, if they don't realize the power that they have as an individual to create their life experience. So again, it comes back to, okay, so you hear the news, you know, Wall Street, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve, yeah, they've, they've printed, you know, 16, 26 trillion dollars, whatever it is, they've printed this huge amount of money, you know, inflation, all these things are happening, you know, the collapse and foreclosures and all these things, it's like, yeah, okay, that's happening, I don't have to feel bad that it's happening, it's not going to negatively affect me, even if, you know, the house, our house individually or your house individually is in foreclosure, or you know or you have been let go of your job that does not mean that you have to feel bad or feel powerless or feel victim to anything that's happening outside of you anything that happens in our life is a perfect example a perfect opportunity for us to really get clear on what we really want to create you know so many people say man I just I hate my job I wish I could have a new job I wish I could have a new job I wish I could have a new job and then they get fired from their job and they're like what how did I get fired 
Well, maybe you needed to lose your job before you can get inspired and, and, and motivated to find the new one that you really want, that you wouldn't have been able to find if you had your old job because you wouldn't be looking. So a lot of times things happen that may seem negative but are actually perfect opportunities for us to really get clear and really get focused and passionate about what we really want. So it's really important. So when I was watching this movie, or after, after the movie, people were talking about, you know, they, they, they didn't feel like there was any hope. And I, I just felt really inspired to say, look, you know what? Each and every person has the power to create the life that they choose, no matter what. You have the ability to think. You have the, you have the power. You have the ability to use your brain, use your mind to think about any specific thought. You have the ability. So with that, and you know your thoughts are actual things, Einstein said this, Edison said this, that thoughts are actual physical things. So when you can think a thought, you're transmitting that thought vibration. And obviously we know universal law, what you give out comes back. So what you receive is based on what you give. The energy you give, the thoughts that you give, the feelings that you give is what will be uh, brought back to you. So just remember that. And remember that you have the power to create anything you want, no matter what's going on around you, no matter what news is on, no matter what you're hearing, no matter what you may be experiencing. It's a greater opportunity for you to get excited about what's going to be good. Get clear on what you do want in your life. So many times people focus on what they don't want, but use that as an opportunity to say, okay, this is what I don't want. I know what I don't want. Let me turn my back to it. Let me focus on what I do want. And you make the decision to say, I'm going to get it. That's it, period. There's no excuses. Once you make a decision, then there's no alternative. You want to stop smoking? Then stop smoking. I don't smoke anymore. That's it, period. And you don't smoke anymore. You have the power to create it. You have the power. So remember that. So I know I went on a little, uh, little tangent as far as that goes, but I just have a couple more things that I want to cover. Uh, and one thing specifically, just, just real quick, I want to give a shout out to a couple people that have helped inspire me on this journey and who I have seen doing some really powerful work, being one person, one camera, and one powerful message. So I want to give a shout out to Kyle Cease, who is a stand-up comedian who is also doing uh, wonderful work in the field of personal development. Um, and he's made some really powerful videos. I would encourage you to check him out on YouTube, Kyle Cease. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, at Kyle Cease. You can go to KyleCease.com and see more of his videos. Uh, but he's doing some really powerful things, and I want to acknowledge and appreciate him for the work that he's doing. Another person that I want to give a shout-out to is Adam Kokesh, a uh, former, former uh, Marine in the Iraq War who came back, is now speaking out uh, not only against the war, but is speaking for... Uh, Ron Paul and the message that he is bringing as far as up in the Constitution, uh, really uh, living by that principle as far as our rights as individuals um, and, and all of that wonderful thing. And so he's been a huge inspiration for me as far as understanding uh, the message of, of what liberty actually is and the message of Ron Paul. So I want to thank you, Adam Kokesh, for doing amazing work and really, really continuing uh, on a powerful track of positive transformation. I really appreciate the work you're doing. So Thank you very much. And one more person that I want to give a shout out to is Luke Radowski. And he's, uh, I don't know if he created, but he's definitely um, representing We Are Change. And I've just seen so many amazing videos from this guy. Uh, you can definitely go to wearechange.com. You can find him on Facebook at We Are Change or Luke Radowski. Uh, I'll put the links uh, in this post for, for all of this so you'll be able to see. But I want to give a you know, huge shout out to Luke because he's done some really powerful work. He goes and you know, asks uh, the, the type of questions that other people won't ask to people like, uh, like Dick Cheney, uh, like you know, Zbigniew Brzezinski, uh, like Newt Gingrich he recently did and asked him about you know, his rituals at the Bohemian Grove. Um, so, I mean, this guy is just doing some, some phenomenal work. He's done incredible things with the Occupy Wall Street movement. Um, he's been there, you know, he's been abused, he's been like stepped on by a horse, he's been hit in the gut by police. So he's really, really doing some, some real, real work uh, as far as getting a message out there. And each of these individuals, uh, you know, my, myself is one person, one camera, and one powerful message. So I just want to encourage each and every person watching this to see how, how can you 
continue to share this type of message? How can you get this message out to more people? How can you help inspire people around you? How can you continue to live an inspired life? Begin asking those questions and, uh, and you'll begin to see some, some really powerful shifts happening in your life, uh, even more so than, than are already there. And just one more thing uh, that I want to mention. I want to give a shout out to a, uh, a, a very special product of this of the week of this show, uh, and this is a really beautiful product. It's called they're called Think Love, and they have these Think Love bands which you wear on your wrist. And I wear this just about everywhere I go. Uh, but what you can see is just you know a uh, uh, simple, pretty simple wristband that you wear, and on the back it has a battery. And so what this does is five times throughout the day, randomly, uh, this thing will just give a little gentle you know, buzz and it reminds you, it reminds me, it reminds people to think love. And it allows us to get into a more loving, higher vibration. And, I mean, this thing you know, goes off at, you know, it's supposed to be random times, but it's, it's almost always at the perfect time. <laughs> it's very, very intuitive, you'll see. Uh, but you can go to thinklove.com and actually look at these uh, and, and order some for yourself. Now, another cool thing about this uh, that makes this even more special is the fact that you can, sync, you can sync these bands up so that they vibrate at the same time with other bands so that you can have family members um, you know, for example, if one, if, if uh, you know, someone's out at war and you want to stay connected, then you can get a group of these bands and you can sync them up through their through their website, so that your your when your bands go off, you can instantly think about that family member and you know think loving thoughts and just be connected that way. I mean, imagine people who are in the hospital. You know, my aunt has one of these in the hospital, and so we've synced up, and so whenever this goes off, I you know think loving positive thoughts about her, and she's able to do the same. So, you know, the bigger vision of this um, product is, you know, imagine a billion people synced up, you know, thinking love at the exact same time. That's going to transform, uh, that's going to transform the planet instantly. <clears throat> and by the time a billion people get these, I believe that the planet will be transformed. Um, so this is a really beautiful product that I wanted to highlight uh, because this is, you know, it's been a huge, a huge benefit in my life. And I know that they're doing some really powerful, beautiful, wonderful work. Uh, so I would encourage you to check them out at uh, thinklove.com. So that wraps it up for this uh, edition of this show. It's been such a joy and a pleasure to share this information with you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like the video. Uh, you can go ahead and post a comment right below here. I would love to hear your thoughts, questions, ideas, uh, anything that you got out of this. I would love to hear. Um, and please feel free to share this video, share this post, uh, share this message, because this is the message that's going to be transforming the world. And you have an opportunity to be the person that shares this message, to create that change in your life. So I'd encourage you to share this information, share this video, uh, and, and look more into the posts you'll see of the news that I'm talking about. You can learn more about that, share those messages as well. Um, and of course, uh, for more information about this, go to freedomandinformation.com and you can sign up to become a member absolutely free so you can get access to all of the latest videos that I will be releasing right here uh, on freedomandinformation.com. Uh, go ahead and sign up right now. And again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this positive news show. As you can see, I love you very, very much and you need to remember that. You are lovable. You are somebody, and you are a champion. Thank you very much, and I look forward to sharing even more with you. Peace.